Hi folks, hope you're okay today, it's good to be with you. I just want to talk to you about evolution. And I just want to share with you a few, a few thoughts about evolution. Now there have been a few debates on the internet, and my friends, the debates on the internet with the internet atheists are not really worth listening to a lot of them. What a lot of these people do is they bamboozle you with uh, science. So they'll, a lot of these uh, internet atheists, they're very clever. Uh, they know the topic sometimes quite well when it comes to science, so they know quite a bit about physics. Or they'll, uh, and they bring in certain experts in certain areas. And so you listen to them and you think, oh, they're so clever, they know the topic so well, they're better than these creationists, etc. And, and that's basically their tactic. Uh, they blind you with, with science. So, for example, uh, you'll, you'll get some clever clouds who's uh, brilliant at physics, and they'll, they'll say in a debate, which has happened recently, oh, well, uh, light travelled billions of years across the universe, and if Adam and Eve was created and they saw light, and the Earth was created in six, six days, how could they have seen light, which was billions of years? Uh, and they might come up with lots of arguments from physics and, and using Einstein's theory of relativity or whatever. And you're listening and you think, boy, they know the stuff and they must be right. But just because people know a lot about a certain topic doesn't mean to say they're correct. One of the things, the arguments there on that particular topic, on the physics and the issue of light, is it presumes that the beginning is a physical beginning. It presumes that all there is is the material that has produced what we see. And that is an assumption. It can never be proved that all there is in the universe is just the material and that the universe had a material beginning. That can never be proved. So it's an assumption. So any uh, calculations that you're making concerning the speed of light and that it, the Earth at that time was billions of years and it could not have been sick... sick uh, not sorry, not created in six days, uh, is is something that you cannot say because you don't know the variables, you don't know the parameters. Uh, one of the parts of the equation is the supernatural. You don't know what you you don't know as a skeptic whether there is a supernatural or not. So you're you're making straw and straw man arguments if you're putting parameters on the physical creation and saying that it could not have been more than six six days because it, it, it could only have been billions of years you're assuming parameters that you, you have no justification for but on the issue of evolution itself which we'll get back to now um, more and more intellectuals more and more scientists of great repute are moving away from evolution it's becoming a, a, a something where, which is crumbling and a lot of intellectuals are beginning to see that evolution doesn't stack up, it doesn't make sense, it doesn't have the intellectual credibility. Uh, for example, I'll give you an example, Karl Popper, who was a philosopher of science, uh, one of the great philosophers of science, said that evolution is not uh, proper science because it cannot be falsified. Because the evolutionary process, the macroevolution, cannot be seen in time, cannot be observed in time, so it cannot be falsified. And he realised that, and if you've got any half a brain, you would realise that evolution is just a lot of nonsense, just on this basis. Now, tremendous academic pressure from his colleagues was put on him, and um, Karl Popper capitulated and, and went back to the idea that no, evolution is not okay. So a lot of internet atheists have, have kind of used that and said, you know, Karl Popper did say evolution was not falsifiable, but he actually reneged on that and he actually went back to his original position. But not a lot of people know this, that in his last days, Karl Popper actually renounced evolution. He actually said that it was a, a, a rubbish theory. And he went back to the position that it was not testable.
that it was not fal falsified. So, my point is this, when you hear internet atheists bang on, on the, and they'll blind you with science, if, if you're lucky to get a decent debate, you, you're very, you'll be very lucky to get a decent debate. A lot of these uh, internet atheists are very um, insecure in their position, so they tend to bully the debates, bully the, the hangouts and things, but if you get past that and you do get a debate, a decent debate, what they'll do is they'll just blind you with uh, the intricacies of a topic and they'll be so deep that nobody understands what they're, what they're saying and they don't even know what they're saying and because of that you just scratch your head and think, oh well they must be right. But if you just do some critical thinking and you just analyse things critically uh, and critically think things through, you can peer through the small screen of the false intellectual authority that they're presented and just do some anal simple analysis. So for example, uh, what's the mathematical probability of mutations in natural selection producing the complexity of life that we have? Just think about that. Meditate on that. And when you start to meditate on it and think about it, the whole thing becomes preposterous. Uh, it, it, it just doesn't add up. Uh, in any shape or form. Um, atheists will try to get out of it, Bi biologists will try to get out of it and say, oh we don't have all the variables, we can't really do the mathematical calculations. No, you don't want to do the mathematical calculations because if you did, you'd be embarrassed by what you find, that it just would never ever add up to the probability of the complexity of life that you say has come through chance. And it is chance, even though you say it's mutation and natural selection, it's ultimately chance. Uh, Dr. Monod, uh, 1960s, no, 1960s Nobel Prize winner uh, in e evolutionary biology said it was chance. We've changed it in the modern times because we're embarrassed by the fact that it's by chance and so we try to bring in order within the chance but at the end of the day it's chance, simple as. And when you do the mathematics start to add it up, it doesn't make sense how chance can produce the complexity of life that we have. Simple as. Logical. Clear cut. You can talk about the complexity of mutations, you can talk about the complexity of DNA, you can talk about anything you want, a complexity about physics or whatever. Simple critical thinking analysis shows you that the whole thing is just a load of baloney. And some of the great thinkers of our time uh, paleontologists, philosophers uh, like Thomas Nagel and um, others and thinkers are beginning, uh, uh, have begun to turn away from evolution and they're trying to look for different answers. So those are my thoughts. So don't be, uh, just because you get some famous internet atheist who thinks they're clever, who can spout a few complex ideas, just because they can do that doesn't mean to say that they can stand up to critical thinking. Um, what you tend to find is you don't get a lot uh, on, on the internet atheists, you don't get a lot of proper critical thinking debates, you don't get that. You get dog fights where it's name calling and it's pulling it personalities down and it's ad hominems and and uh, drama and, uh, and demonization of people and all the rest of it. But you very rarely get uh, decent critical analysis or critical thinking uh, where they uh, where they truly allow the Christians to give their position. Um, and and when that happens. Invariably, if a Christian comes with some decent critical thinking uh, and asks the right questions, evolution is exposed and um, the atheist community on the internet doesn't want that. So, so they prefer the dogfight, so they prefer to, to uh, sabotage uh, Christian apologies in, in whatever way. So, my point is this, is that there are intellectuals, there are scientists of eminence moving away from evolution and it's precisely because of Karl Popper's thinking that people are beginning to wake up that it is not falsifiable it's not real science 
Rozumiem,